When I moved to the city to become a pastry chef, I just thought, a real job sounds boring to me. I really like to eat sweets all the time. I'd rather do it all day, every day than anything else. And so I'm just gonna jump in and do it and I'll figure the rest out later. We have a very fun afternoon planned. We take having fun very seriously. <laughs> My name is Christina Tozzi. I am the chef and owner of Momofuku Milk Bar. We serve mostly sweet items. They're sort of kooky baked goods with an American perspective, but we also have a lot of savory breads. And we now have five stores in New York City. We're most known for our cereal milk, which is the flavor of what's left in your bowl after you eat all the cereal out of it. So the pretzel milk is the milk that we're the most proud of right now. Most of the flavor of the pretzels is actually on the outside. So you're sort of just washing that salty layer off of them. For me, it's like the ultimate salty, malty, sweet flavored milk. We've made ice cream with it, like a pretzel flavored ice cream. When you have a really good burger, it's not like it's the first burger you've ever had, but you still want to talk about it like it's a revelation. And that's what good food is. And then of course we have pork buns, which are the Momofuku staple. If you know the name Momofuku, you probably have had a pork bun. Long ago when Dave Chang and I were first coming up with the foundation of what Momofuku milk bar would be, we always said that it would be like Dairy Queen with pork buns. We like to use sort of our formal foundations in cooking and in baking and sort of give it to you as a customer in a really easy, approachable way. You ladies ready? The foundations of Milk Bar come from four of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Courtney McBroom, Helen Joe, uh, Jamie Desiker, and Jenna Derman. They help run the kitchen, they help run the milk bars, they help do everything big and small in between. They're sort of like Wonder Women. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first we're gonna go to Dairy Queen for breakfast. On our way to Dairy Queen, we started off with some um, jello shots that Jamie cast in these orange rinds and then cut up like they were little orange slices that you would eat after a crazy soccer match. Jamie, these are ridiculous. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> we also made some kimchi Bloody Marys, which being part of the Momofuku family means having kimchi in-house all the time. And for me, the kimchi Bloody Mary was clutch on the way over to Dairy Queen. Yes. To Kimchi Bloody Mary. Kimchi Bloody to Dairy Mary. Queen for breakfast. Oh! <laughs> hey, how are you? Good. Do you guys have the fryer on yet? Oreo yeah. cheese awesome. quake? <laughs> Just checking. Just checking. Just checking. Just checking. You want to get the chicken strip basket? Yeah. May I have a mini blizzard with Oreo, yeah, Butterfinger, Heath, and cookie dough? I have like a very strong opinion about what goes into a blizzard. As many like mix-ins as possible. There must be Oreos, and you have to eat it all in one sitting. All right, which one did you get? I mixed Butterfinger and turtle with that custard. What's yours? Just straight Butterfinger? Mine's um, Heath Bar, Butterfinger, Oreo, cookie dough. <laughs> mm. Thank you. You gotta do fries in the blizzard. I don't like eating ice cream when it's too cold. I like letting it melt a little bit. And you gotta go salty French fry straight into your blizzard. I'm also really into the cheese quake. Why didn't we come up with the liquid cheese quake? <laughs> I think like Dairy Queen also has like a sense of humor in the way that they name some of their menu items, which I really relate to for obvious reasons. And making a blizzard from scratch is like the ultimate, I think, experience in terms of like, what's my mood? Do you think I can make a blizzard with you? Sure. Can we do Oreo and strawberry cheesecake? Sure. I've never made a blizzard before, so getting Mike to agree to let me behind the counter to really like show me the one, two, threes of a blizzard was like the ultimate experience. 
Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, we got Oreo strawberry cheesecake. Whoa. What? Uh, my first That's blizzard. Concern. How you guys feeling? Ready for a Michelada <laughs> in the beach? Bye, Mike. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon. To the beach. Oh, it smells like kimchi in here. <laughs> they should make air fresheners that smell like <laughs> kimchi. We're going to the beach. Maybe we should practice our beach volleyball with this sick. Here we go. Hi Chris! Hi Martine! Chris and Martine and Beans the dog met us at the Far Rockaways. Bud, come on! Don't be stubborn! Come on! For me, going to the beach on the off season is the best way to sort of like let loose and chill out because it's sort of like the beach belongs to you. I really love spending time at the beach and sort of just kicking, kicking up sand and letting loose or just sort of, you know, dicking around. <laughs> we made this last night with some leftover kimchi Bloody Mary liquid and lime juice and some kochukaru salt and then some Brooklyn lager. You want to serve it up? So I think the perfect beach snack is a pastrami and rye croissant. It's got a little Russian dressing, some sauerkraut stuffed in. Easy to eat, sand can't get in it. <laughs> the perfect beach snack. Cheers. We should have a sandcastle building contest. How about who can build the tallest in a certain amount of time? Okay. Part of my personality is very competitive. Go! <laughs> <laughs> I will die. I will throw myself in front of traffic trying to be the best. Oh, they're totally fucked. Let's go. Wait, we're going for the tallest? But I'm building yeah. a moat. It maintains that like working hard and kicking butt and pushing yourself, but also like not taking yourself too seriously. Five, four, three, two, one, head down. Down. <laughs> Step away from your castle. I think it's fairly obvious who the winner is. <laughs> Clearly ours is the tallest. You know, it's fun to be competitive. It's fun to be like, who's gonna scoop cookies the fastest today? After the beach, we decided to head to Randall's Island Golf Center for a little game of putt-putt golf. All right. Losers can go first. <laughs> oh, losers first, please. Duck pin bowling and putt-putt golf were like the foundations of my childhood. So whenever I see a putt-putt golf course, I like, I cannot, I can't stop talking about it until I get out of the car and can hit the putt-putt golf course. Dave Chang met us there. Most people don't know that when he was a kid, he was sort of like on the road to becoming a professional golf player. He was one-handing some putt-putt holes, um, which I thought was pretty intense. Where'd you get those hot putt-putt golf kicks? Just a little something you picked up. <laughs> Courtney got the first hole-in-one. We had a little friendly wager. I owe her $20, I think. Put me down, put me down for one on this one. <laughs> Some more friends started arriving. Danny from Mission Chinese and Steve from Asia Dog ended up joining us at Randall's Island with the hot new Taco Bell tacos wrapped in the nacho cheese taco shell. We went, we got 40 what? of the Dorito tacos. Because yeah, <laughs> you have to try it because we are talking about it yeah, yesterday. Yeah. You guys want to eat one now? 
This is insanity. So good. This is ridiculous. I've been making um, nachos with um, Doritos, nacho cheese, and Cool Ranch mixed for years. Someone has a hidden camera in my apartment. <laughs> I feel like we should give up on putt putt and just start tailgating. <laughs> Tailgate, I feel like there has to be some sort of chips and dip. We're very big on chips and dip in our kitchen, so we brought um, ranch dip and potato chips, and we made a six, seven layer dip with tortilla chips. For me, a good tailgate has warm food. So these are kimchi quesadillas. They're um, tortillas with a little bit of shredded cheddar cheese and our homemade kimchi, Napa cabbage. We decided to bring our favorite throw together sandwich, which is a grilled cheese sandwich, but instead of sandwich bread, we use two of our corn cookies and we make a ham and cheese grilled cheese sandwich. Mm -mm. The last time I was at a tailgate, it's because I was going to a Redskins game and my stepbrother made us show up to the stadium at 7.45 in the morning. And we got so shit faced, my sister was trying to like roundhouse kick me. <laughs> shit face at 10 o'clock in the morning and then she got mad at me because she fell on the ground and couldn't be <laughs> <laughs> That was the last time I tailgated. The, the one and only time that I think I properly tailgated. We were having a blast. We were all sort of like kumbaya around the tailgate and all of a sudden um, this woman at the Randalls Island Golf Center called the cops on us because apparently tailgating is not legal in their parking lot. They weren't having us anymore, so we packed up and got out of there. <laughs> we wrapped it up.